What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the Lenovo Smart Display. This is the eight inch version, you can also get a 10 inch version as well. Now they sent this to me a while ago, you may have seen it on the background, it's been sat there for a while with this side, or well, that side. I know it's been all over the place for a, a number of months now. Um, just a quick apology to them for taking so long to do this, but um, I did have some personal stuff arise uh, unexpectedly after it arrived so they do kind of know you know the basis of why this is this has taken so long i've taken off the shrink map just to uh get the video going a little bit quicker i'm going to do an unboxing and an overview in this one if you want a full review then i'll link something in the description for you to check out uh, i haven't got my overhead this time uh the cameras are just not really going my way today so we're just going to roll with the front one which is 4k anyway so we could punch in for certain parts um, but i will add b-roll for anything that you need to see up close so a few different specs to go over i have got a cheat sheet with me um, just to make it a little bit easier the 8 inch and the 10 inch smart displays are using a qualcomm uh, base of a Snapdragon 624 octa-core processor. The 8-inch has a 1.75-inch driver. The 10-inch has a 2-inch driver. They've also got two passive tweeters in there as well. Dual microphone away erase for picking up your OK Google commands. Um, there's a slight difference in weight as well, which is just uh, like 0.2 kilograms from the 8 to the 10. Uh, this one's going to be grey, but the 10-inch version's bamboo which is uh, nice if you want something that's wood. Wood effect stuff does look nice. I'll put um, a screenshot on the screen for you that to see that now. Now, a little bit different from what other smart displays we've seen. And I'll go across that. So, so far we've got the instructions. I don't think there's anything else in the box. Small instruction booklet. Let's get this out of the way for now. Okay, so this is obviously still got the packaging. So we've got the uh, instructions and the power adapter. I will plug this in in a minute as well so you can see it working. So in terms of screen display sizes, the eight inch has a 2080 by 800 display and the 10 inches has a 1920 by 1200 display. Now let's get this unwrapped. Now this has a much sturdier wherever rotating which obviously I'll get to which I do like let's try and get this open as best we can lots of different sides to peel this out there we go get rid of that so here we go so primarily you can have this obviously in two modes portrait or landscape literally just rotate it now we've got a very smooth stylish back you can see a nice curve nice curvature going on there which is obviously gonna where you're gonna get the weight for when you do it in portrait or landscape um, it's nice to actually have a lot more weight as well I do like you know sturdy devices it does show like a good build quality and it has got some rubber protection all the way around it as well so which no matter which way you have it up it will be um, protected from scratching your surface obviously your speakers are under here your two tweeters the 1.75 inch driver and then you have the two inch on the 10 inch version so yeah as i did say it's got a gray back but the bamboo one is on the 10 inch exclusively it would be nice if you could have a bamboo option for the eight um, some people may like that kind of style but in a smaller form factor so Maybe that could be an option in the future. If you're worried about specific sizes of how big these are, so the eight inches is 142 millimeters by 263. The bigger brother, the 10 inch is 173 by 311. So they are, so that's just over a ruler. So probably about there. So I just have different options though. Two microphones are at the top. And then along from that, we've got a switch that will kill off the camera. So if you want to go privacy mode, you just literally switch that across and it's a physical slider that goes over the camera to cover it up. So you can make sure your privacy is secure. If you want to cover that over, maybe if you've got, you know, got your kids around or anything like that, you can just easily slide that across. So this is capable of doing things for Spotify, YouTube, Google Photos, Chromecast, Google Duo, that's the, um, kind of like the video calling interface and then you can do Philips Hue and Nest as well integration so if you want to control your thermostats 
that's uh, pretty swifty. In addition to the kill switch for the camera, you've also got a mic mute on the side as well, so you can do either or, or both, which is nice to have a little bit of extra uh, privacy if you want to talk about sensitive topics or you know family things or anything like that. You can just be safe uh, to know that that's going to be covered and you're going to be nice and secure. There's two holes for microphones on the top and then two on the other side. I guess you could say the top is whatever way up you have it at the time. But considering, so there's a little bit of wobble when it's this way around. I am just, just might want to be a little bit careful. Just trying to see how much kind of force that would need. Okay, so bang of the table seems to keep it upright. So I guess it's one of those things that just be careful if you're swinging bags onto the side of your kitchen counter, you're not gonna knock it over. But to be fair, it looks pretty sturdy. So I reckon you should be okay. At the very bottom, we've got a power jack. Now let's get this plugged in and give you a little bit of a demo on how it's gonna work. So plugging it in turns the power on straight away. A little bit of a side note, the power adapter is sideways, so if you're putting in a plug, make sure you put it on the right, because otherwise you're not going to use your other plug. Hi, be... I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To get started, please download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Hi Google, you're very loud when you start up. Holy balls. Okay, so as it said, get the app and get downloading Google Home, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've downloaded that. I've turned the light off just so you can see the screen a little bit better. This is just searching for the devices now and it should pop up when it recognizes that the display is there. Would you like to pair Lenovo Smart Display? Uh, yes. I'm gonna do this real time just as a kind of test on how long it's gonna take as well. I know some people are always interested in setup times and stuff, so just as well sit through this one there we go so just add the digits i presume connected does it match yep okay we'll do that so let's change now i'm just saying where we want to connect to Connects into Wi-Fi just as you do in the app on your phone, so that's nice and easy. Literally three steps, so that's doing the same action as on my phone. Okay, so that's connected to Wi-Fi. It initially connected to my phone as Wi-Fi, and then it's gone and found my network through this and then taken over from my phone. I hope that makes sense. It's getting dark, so hopefully the light won't interfere with this too much. So I've enabled the address, uh, my phone number, Wi-Fi, and it's gonna install the latest software. It's gonna be about eight minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, this is literally just rebooted as I've been faffing. So let's just see how it's gonna go now. Not as loud, hopefully. Lenovo, please turn it down from you know full full power when you first boot because that was whew, that was a surprise. Seems to be set up, so let's see. You control the volume from the app. Broadcast. Hello there. Hello there. Pretty cool. By the way, if you want to send a reply, just let me know. So you could do this. Broadcast. Kids, your dinner's ready. Kids, your dinner's ready. <laughs> so for all you parents out there, if you want to bang one of these in the kids' room, something you could do there. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. That's me. How can I help? Play Paul Flint on Spotify. All right, here's Paul Flint on Spotify. What? Okay, Google. Pause. Okay, Google. 
Okay, Google. That's me. Hello there. Play. <laughs> okay, Google. Volume 30. Sorry, the max volume is only 10. So, what level do you want to set it to? Three. Okay, Google. Volume 7. Okay, Google. Volume 4. Okay, that's working. If anyone's wondering, this is my outro music. Okay, Google. Pause. Okay, Google. Mm, a little bit iffy with the okay Googles. What's the weather like tomorrow? It'll be mostly sunny, with a high of 13 and a low of 8. Okay, Google. What's on my schedule? Sorry, I can't find anything on your calendar. That's a good point, because there's nothing on there. So, that works. <laughs> okay, Google. Play. Now, one thing I wanted to try, which is what I did there, is I didn't let it tell me that it was ready for my command. I just wanted to jump in. I know there was a lot of things with the Apple Air, AirPod, AirPod, that people were waiting for Siri to kick up and say, like, ready for the command. Whereas you could just say what you, you know, say the command and then say what you wanted it to do. So, OK, Google, play. Uh, OK, Google, volume four. What was on four? OK, Google. Pause. So you don't have to wait for it to kick in, which I think is nice, especially because there's a little bit of a delay with it actually starting. So I like that. Let's see how it looks when you rotate it. It looks very similar. Uh, very, very similar. That's going to be something that they're going to support in the future, I presume. So clearly a few little uh, kinks they need to iron out um, but for the majority, I'm excited to see where this goes. It does need a little bit of improvement. Um, some of the commands aren't doing very much at the moment. The Google Duo thing is something that we'll have to try. Um, but like I said, I'll put a review down in the description box for you, for anyone that's wondering. Also some uh, B-roll for the little bits that are more up close. Some teething issues, but for the majority, I like it. Uh, let's see what they do with it. Maybe give you a little bit of an update in the future, maybe. So that's the Lenovo Smart Display. That's the 8-inch variant. You can get the 10, as I mentioned. I think 8 inches are quite a nice, quite a nice size, though. It's not too big. I think the 10 might be a little bit bulky for, you know, kitchen camp tops and stuff like that. So um, this one's a kind of nice in-between. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments box below. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get one. Pretty cool. On first impressions, I do like the kind of curvature on the back and how it sits up. You can do portrait and landscape. It's quite nice. Um, does need a little bit of work, but that's always stuff they can do with updates, so that's always a good thing. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Lots of stuff coming up for you on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis at 7 p.m. Now that's the new schedule. So yeah, really getting on this now. So let's keep a growl. So yeah, thank you for Lenovo for sending out for me to look at. I'll see you all in the next one. What's up everybody, Peter McKinn here, back with another video for you today. <laughs>